Hey guys, thanks for checking out the build of my workbench. Now, I wanted to make this workbench because I had a little bit of a problem or more of an inconvenience uh, when trying to build something. Uh, to start, I've got a small uh, garage shop. It's only a two-car garage. So because I've got a, a small workshop, um, I had some woodworking tools, milling tools, cutting tools that I was having to uh, take down and set up on a small work table in the past. And uh, of course it would eat into time and ultimately slow down productivity a little bit. So I wanted to make a workbench that incorporated all the tools, the vacuum system, uh, power where I didn't have to worry about plugging and uh, disconnecting all the tools whenever I needed them. And it would help you know, speed up productivity and take up less footprint in the small shop. Um, also be on wheels, so it would be easy to roll out of the way whenever we needed to, uh, in case we needed a garage for something else. So I first started by laying out all the tools to get an idea of the overall dimension and what kind of spacing each tool requires in between. Next I drew out some plans the old fashioned way with a pencil and some paper and started by inspecting my lumber, dividing up the more straight pieces with the not so straight pieces. And a lesson I learned a while back is always, always mill your lumber, doesn't matter what project. Um, even though this was just a workbench, I milled it out so I'd have a good foundation and everything would build off of that. Everything would be nice and straight and uh, it wouldn't come back to bite me later. So I was running the wood through the jointer to get out the warps and cups and all that good stuff. Now I'm setting up the planer. This kind of gives you an idea of the process I had uh, previously before the new workbench. Um, having to move the tools, hook up the vacuum, hook up the power. Alright, so right now I'm planing down the lumber to um, make it all the same thickness, so it's all kind of uniform. drilling some Craig holes. I drilled about a thousand Craig holes. I started to lay out the bottom framing um, and then I decided to have a, a double espresso that day and get a lot of work done really quickly here. Alright, and here's a shot of the frame coming together. Kind of gives you an idea of how it's laid out, um, the construction. The very bottom frame doesn't, isn't really held together by Craig screws. Uh, it's got four inch wood screws going through each corner. Here I am cutting the remaining pieces to finish off the end where the table saw is going to go. And of course, more lumber cut means more milling and most likely more Craig holes. So I've got some more cut lumber so I fired up the jointer again and started running everything through. First through the jointer, 
and then the planer. Okay, here's a shot of the 2x4 frames that the tools will be mounted to. And here's the template for the casters. These are casters that I got off Amazon. And as you can see, these casters are collapsible. Next up was painting. I probably should have done this before I put the casters on, but oh well. These are barrel bolt latches I picked up at Home Depot, two and a half inch. Then I got this value pack of uh, brushed satin nickel finish hinges. They were pretty sturdy and affordable. And there's a shot of the casters that I picked up off of Amazon. Pretty happy with them so far. In the moment you've all been waiting for, a sneak peek at one of the tools being folded out of the way. The next phase I started working on the blast gates. I cut them out of some scrap plywood and then used inch and a half PVC. I used Gorilla Glue to attach the PVC to the plywood and that was my first time using Gorilla Glue and that stuff is pretty awesome. It's super strong and as it dries it kind of doubles, doubles in size and makes a good seal and I couldn't pull it off of the wood uh, as hard as I tried. Here's some blast gate art. Here's a little demo of the blast gate door. It's just a quarter inch piece of plywood that slides in there. The vacuum was pulling those shut, so I ended up having to use some T-nuts and some bolts uh, to act as a clamp or stopper to hold the door open or closed. That way the vacuum didn't suck it shut when it was running. Here's a shot of the finished product, or the final product. The blast gate with the T-nut door lock thing, and you can see the vacuum tube down there, uh, the PVC duct, and the power outlet is already mounted, actually. The space you're looking at now is where a router will eventually go.
Hey guys, Philip here. On today's segment of the Ultimate 4x8 Workbench Build, um, I'll be working on the dust separator, the shelf to hold the dust separator, and the shop vac, and then also uh, tackle the planer vacuum and router vacuum tube. Uh, they'll be on a shared vacuum tube because where the planer hits the worktop table, uh, there's virtually no space. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, first off here is the area where these two unsuspecting Home Depot buckets will be turned into the dust separator. Uh, that shelf down there, uh, I'll have to mount it a little bit lower to make some clearance for the piping uh, just under this lid for the dust separator. You'll see that later on. And also the shop vac will be sitting down here hopefully with those two buckets. So I'm not sure what you would call this, but I made this wooden box to mount the vacuum tube to the bucket. I attached it using some sheet metal screws and Gorilla Glue. The center piece of plywood uh, separates the lower compartment so all of the large particles and dust will cyclone around there and then fall to the bottom bucket which is just below. I used a pretty large elbow that'll fit my full size shop vac. The shop vac did not end up fitting on that shelf so I had to go with a smaller vacuum. I'll give it a try and see how it does. This is a shot of the top bucket flipped upside down attached to the lid. All of those holes are where the large particles will fall through the first bucket down into the lower bucket. That is a Home Depot bucket head shop vac. Uh, it seemed decent enough. I'll give it a try and see if it has enough suction. That is an adapter I made. It just has a piece of wood inside that fits that vacuum tubing. All right, so here's the planer in its uh, upright position, folded up, ready to go. And as you can see over here where the uh, outlet is for all the dust or where you would hook your vacuum to, there's only you know, maybe three or four inches before we hit this lid. So, uh, and then of course there's pretty much no space down there to run the vacuum tube. So that is where I plan on going through this lid uh, out to the other side. And this eventually will have the router table. And here will be a shared vacuum inlet that I can hook to the lid and utilize with the planer while the planer's in use. So here's a shot from the other side. Uh, of course, this is where the router will go eventually. So down here we've got an extra blast gate that will hold the vacuum tubing for the router table and then also it'll be shared with the planer on the top side. So it'll come up and I'll have a hole cut in this lid. Uh, the vacuum tube will be sitting there and then we'll be able to pull it up and stretch it to the other side and it'll be held in place with magnets.
after I got the first part routed out, I hit it with the rough stuff, and then I hit it with the not so rough stuff. Here I traced out a template to get an idea of where the pieces of metal need to go that will be recessed in the top of the workbench so the magnets have something to stick to. I ended up using the leftover knockouts from the electrical boxes and then once I uh, removed some material to recess those pieces in, I attached it with the Gorilla Glue and so far it's holding up really well.
Once all of the vacuum tubing and vacuum piping was complete, I moved on to the electrical. Each tool is plugged into its own electrical box, and the vacuum is actually controlled by the switch that's below the table saw. All right, and finally, here's a demonstration of how all of the tools set up and then fold away when they're not needed. thank you again so much for watching the video. If it helped you at all or inspired you, uh, or if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I hope to continue to produce more content similar to this in the future.